Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Black Shirt Breakdown. My name is Steve Mark. I'm a staff writer for Inside Nebraska, and that is Jay Foreman, our eight-year NFL veteran defensive player and our former Nebraska Black Shirt. Uh, Jay, we got a, another kind of a, a different type of Black Shirt Breakdown video today. Today, we'll be breaking down South Carolina's 24-14 to win over Kentucky from October 8th of this past right. season. And, and why are we doing that? Uh, because Marcus Satterfield uh, appears to be Nebraska's offensive coordinator. So we thought we'd um, maybe go back and take a look at Marcus Satter Satterfield's offense at South Carolina and see if we can get any um, type of hints about what, what a future 2023 Husker offense might look like. Yeah, I mean, you know, if he's not the offensive coordinator, you know, he's going to have some influence on there. And obviously with his success, obviously the last two games with uh, Spencer Rattler and that South Carolina offense, it could give you a sneak peek into some of the concepts that, you know, he might bring with him to, to marry along if he's a co-offensive coordinator. So, you know, I think it's good, you know, because the, the staff isn't fully, um, you know, done yet. You know, I think they have four more spots to fill uh, and in particularly on the defensive side. So obviously we'll get to that, but I think right now uh, we can get a good uh, sneak peek or maybe a head start on what we could, you know, possibly see in the future, you know, for the Cornhusker offense, but then also, maybe look at some of the athletes that they, you know, could kind of be looking for as well, because, you know, when we see these three or four plays, you're going to see some distinct differences in what they uh, have down there as far as their skill position players. So I'm pretty excited to get, you know, break this down real quick. All right. Absolutely. So let's get on right to it. And our first um, play that I wanted to kind of show was this first down run to start to kick off the second half of this game. South Carolina and Kentucky went into halftime um, tied at seven on one touchdown apiece, but South Carolina kind of controlled the second half and the offense Satterfield's offense kind of got things rolling in the second half more so than the first half. But I think this, this first down run kind of kicked the whole thing off because it was, a, it, it started off as six, a six play drive that ended in a touchdown. Um, and, and I think this 18 yard run, from Marshawn Lloyd, their really talented running back. First of all, South Carolina's got dudes everywhere. Um, right. So that's that's kind of the difference with the SEC and and maybe what uh, Matt Rule and Satterfield are stepping into right now at, the, at this current state of of Nebraska uh, of Nebraska's roster. But um, first of all, yeah, let um, let's let's go through this and um, what do you see here, Jay? Well, first, I, I think that the sneaky thing is they they have what's uh, you know maybe twenty one personnel or eleven personnel, so they're catching Kentucky more in a a, a pass type of defense a scheme where they have a three down lineman look at a little bit of a nickel look so now they have the advantage from a physicality standpoint you see 44 in there is kind of fullback h back you know he, he he might be listed as a h back or a tight end or fullback but you can see he's a pretty powerful dude so it's the, about the running game right you want to create the numbers advantage and you see it it's just a simple toss crack toss it's not blocked perfectly but the numbers outweigh the numbers that kentucky has you know, to defend the run. And look, you see the corner there. He gets sealed in a decent block by number three, 18 and 44 have a pancake block. 18's going up and getting the corner. You see the safety, not even in the screen running back is run. This is what you see. This is just like essentially a toss crack on air, a 15, 20 yard run, explosive run to start the half. The thing I really like in a tight game, South Carolina lit Tennessee up, you know, as far as in, in the, in the past game. And what do they do to t set the tone coming out of halftime to let you know we're here to do business? Toss crack, 15, 20 yard play before he's knocked out by number 14. And number 14 didn't even want to come up and make that tackle. You see it here, right? The motion. And you right here is a defender. You know, this is a run play. Look at it. It's just a toss crack. This is a play you see every Friday night. Not blocked great. 54 kind of gets in there, but he's a little bit late. Just enough block by 79. A pancake block here. 18 doing essentially a scoop block up to the corner, right? The receiver got a little bit of a pancake. So he's everybody's getting pancakes and serving up syrup with it too. Probably a little bit of butter. The running back, look at this. He's untouched for 10, 12, yeah. 14, 16 yards. Turns it into an 18, 20 yard gain. Uh, it, there's nothing really, you know, scientifically to it or really, you know, this is just a toss crack. Well executed play, not to perfection, but look at the numbers. Just look at right here. They're they have them outnumbered right there uh, at the play side, and it's a bad, you know, obviously run field by number six. He's looking for help. 
14 is still in his back pedal while the run's going. That lets you know the type of mentality that South Carolina came out with, along with the play call if it's Marcus Satterfield and the execution. And you keep seeing it right here, 18. He gets up on 15, 44 and 18, knock him down, gets around the corner. The receiver has a nice little decent crack block. As you see this, it's not knocking guys down and guys perfectly blocked. But when you have the numbers advantage and the motion, when the motion here, right, mm -hmm. the quick motion gets his shoulder squared, he knows where he's going, finding somebody to hit and knocking guys on the ground, that's exactly what you need to do in the run game. And the run game is not to be – it's never blocked perfectly all game long. But if it's blocked effectively enough, you can get explosive runs. And so uh, this is a little – uh, change up that you you know that fans have been asking for or were asking for from Mark Whipple right some more outside runs how do you get outside runs it's not just toss it out there and like and make it Anthony Grant or Gabe Ir Irvin beat two or three guys you got to outnumber them in the run game you know what this play is Steve this is the play that Purdue ran against us yeah and where, where they outnumbered us and, and Huckabee was running and it seemed untouched for six to eight nine ten yards South Carolina had a 16 yard run to start the half it's it's a really good play call with a different personnel that Kentucky wasn't ready for. They were probably playing pass. You see, they're getting up field, think it's a passing down, or they're going to pass. And that's what they felt like coming into the game. They got to stop the pass, and we'll see it here in the next couple of plays. But the run game is effectively. And so when you can pass the ball, you can run the ball. And when you run the ball effectively, now it's going to start opening up the passes, what we'll see here in the next couple of plays. You mentioned number 44 there, that H back, tight end, fullback, whatever you want to call him. He's six foot three, almost 260 pounds. Right. When I w went back and watched this game, if you follow number 44, Nate Atkins, that's, that's generally where the ball, the ball is going to go. Satterfield yeah. really liked using number 44 as kind of that lead blocker. And he was a grad transfer, older guy, just a just a man that looked out there. Um, and, and he was a very good blocker. He was a transfer from East Tennessee State, which was Marcus Satterfield's um alum he is an alum of east east tennessee state so yeah let's go back to this let's move on to the second play now we got a third and four situation and i wanted to use this one just because it gave us kind of a a, a look into what marcus satterfield wanted to do when he's backed up on his own 15 yard line in a third and four situation with kind of an athletic um quarterback with a good arm so uh jay what do you see here yeah, exactly here, right? You come out in 11 personnel, you're overloading the zone here, um, and then you keep your tight end the block, obviously, because you, you you can't have too many people out in the passing route. But you have an athletic quarterback, you're changing the pocket. Again, it's something that we needed to see this year from um, Coach Mark Whipple, and we didn't you get him out of there. It's an easy read. It's a flood. It's a flood type of concept where you see the running back here. He's also the blocker. He's looking for any trash coming out there he picks up a guy gets in the way you have a guy short there they had a guy short there and they had a, a seven cut here so you run a guy to the flat make sure he gets to the first down you see that right there he's open that's the easy one and then you have the guy a little bit deeper in it which is a corner route and you see him both of them were open great play by the quarterback but what i really like is the concept get him out there on the edge mm -hmm. and if they're they don't have the extra defender coming in there you expect him to run and get that first down so you're thinking about Maybe the Wisconsin game, right, for Logan Smothers. Tuck it. Keep the keep the chains going. So, one, you got the easy throw to the flat if that's covered. Look for the deeper one. At the end of the day, run it or throw it into the stands and punt the ball. But it's a good concept here, a good safe route or a good safe play call that actually plays to the ad advantages of the quarterback and their athletic ability out there on, on the edge. You got a running back in there doing a good job of picking up a, a, a defender here. Get the quarterback out there. He's looking way downfield. If he had to check it down, the, the receiver's doing a good job of settling down right there to get the first down. I like it because it's a first down maker, right? And it's a very, very – it's not a conservative uh, play call because obviously you see this uh, deep seven cut right here, but it's an effective and efficient play call where there isn't a lot of risk, right? The worst-case scenario, you throw it out of bounds, you're already backed up, punt it and play defense. But the way the play was executed with the speed, again, look at the motion. Look at his head snap around. We saw that maybe the with the Wisconsin and Minnesota game for Oliver Martin. Once you get past the line of scrimmage, his head whips around, gets to the first down. He's the safe throw. The the the, the cheese throw, what, what we used to call against the defense, don't take the cheese, bite up on the short one, get beat by the deep one. The cheese is open. 
and it, both of them were open. But then I liked the concept really, really well because one, it, it, it's a confidence builder as well uh, mm -hmm. for the quarterback, right? You have an easy throw right there. You could tuck in and run if the other defender isn't filling right there. And you have an easy throw deep to short, and both of them are open. So this is what they practice, right? This is what the look that they want, and this is the execution that they want. So I like the concept when you're in a, a tight game to continue. You know, you're only up by 10. You're on the road. The biggest thing, and you're in the fourth quarter, you see with 11 minutes to go, the biggest thing is now Kentucky is fighting against the clock. They're fighting against the, the, the lead that you have. But now when you execute and getting three more downs, now the clock starts to dwindle. Now the advantage and the momentum stays on your sideline. So it's not always about getting the big play and scoring. It's continue to, to churn out yards and continue to get the drive. Because you got to think right where they're at, Steve, Kentucky didn't get obviously any points, but yeah. they punted and thinking that they could get off on the off the field and get the ball back at close to their 50 if they can stop them on third down. Now that's nullified. An explosive pass play, I think they get out to around approximately the 36-yard line. Now, one more first down, South Carolina can can uh, be more aggressive and look to score more points. And so um, I like the whole the whole overall concept of it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the less risk, the effectiveness, the execution, and playing um, situational football, which is huge as well. Because keep the defense on the sideline, let make sure they're rested. Kentucky can't score without the ball and it allows you to keep the ball in your hand and the momentum and allows you to eventually win the game. And that uh, flood concept where you have a short intermediate and deep route, that's something you see every single game. That's in a lot of offensive playbooks. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go on to this next play here. This, so we just got done with the third and four situation. Let's go to a third and long third and nine here uh, midway through the third quarter, uh, South Carolina nursing a seven point lead. Um, so yeah, let's just go through it and uh, take us through this. You know, one thing, you know, the three different plays we've seen, you've seen three different personnel groups, right? You had kind of a 21 personnel or 12 personnel, 11 personnel. Now you have 10 personnel, 10 personnel is one running back, zero tight end. Now you're trying to get some third and nine is an advantage for the defense, right? You see it's man to man defense, right? A little bit, a bit of a trips bunch, look an odd trips bunch, look negative split up top, right? So what do you do with press coverage? You see both of the cornerbacks are pressing a guy. You try to rub them off against each other and see a little bit of a rub routes and crossing routes. It's a good concept against man-to-man -man defense. And you see it, they create the separation, a little bit of trash, runs them into the, to the umpire there, catches it. Now we have an explosive play right up the sideline, number 13. And you, we talked about the personnel that they have, right? Big, strong, fast receivers. Look at them. Once he gets a step on you, look at that five-yard separation. Spencer Rattler does a really good job throwing it to the other hash. So for you fans out there and you're looking at crossing routes, whether you're watching NFL football and obviously college football bowl games, the crossing routes coming from the negative split is going to be thrown at the opposite hash. One, because you're running away from the coverage. See right there? You see him at the top of the screen. He's not all the way away from him. Okay, runs him into the referee. All fair is game. All, all is fair in, in the game of football. Now he catches it. Look at right at the opposite hash. Okay, everybody's back is turned is turned to him because they're in man to man defense. A couple yards separation with some good athletes or not. These aren't good athletes. He's a great athlete. Mm -hmm. Leads into explosive play. So again, the concepts of using your personnel, using situational football, using the defense's coverage against them, and it happens. We saw this at times against us. You know, this year in Nebraska, man to man defense. What do we see? Crossing routes, pick routes, right? It's just like basketball. It's just like basketball or, or basketball on grass. And this is what you're seeing here, getting it to them. And even though 14 is a pretty good corner, 13 is a, a phenomenal athlete. He gets a couple yards advantage. It's going to be an explosive play. Look at it right here. It's good, good pass, good step up in the pocket, catch it. The pass wasn't perfect, mm -hmm. right? It was a little bit behind him, right? We saw that a couple of times this year. We got to catch it, turn it up, explosive play. The one thing, Steve, I always try to tell people, they don't put a picture in the box score of the explosive plays. All it, say, all it says, 15 or 20 yards above. Whatever your idea of an explosive play is, right here, he catches it, maybe at the four or five yard line, right? Yep. Turns it up, first down. Now it's at 10, 15, 20, 25. 
these are body blows for a defense and a defensive coordinator, right? He's thinking, okay, we have a really good coverage here. We like our matchups. Now he runs them off. It's a really good, uh, this is really good coaching here by their receiver coach and their offensive coordinator. And I'm assuming Marcus Satterfield. When you see this umpire here, right? You get enough depth. He steps up what he's supposed to do because he's looking for holding. Now, you just run him off right there and it creates another yard or two of separation. So when the ball is thrown behind a receiver, the umpire being in the way allows it to, to keep the same separation. And now you see it right there. Now he's in a trail position. And trust me, I've been in there a couple of times. Those are positions you do not want to be in because the coach is not going to like that when you watch the film uh, the next day. But it's a good concept. Uh, they're using your defense against it or your defensive coverage against it and, and taking advantage of your athletes. And also, like I like to see right there, number zero right there. Right. You see that? That's how you get explosive plays. And I'm sure Marcus Satterfield and the offensive coaches are going to demand downfield blocking. You saw it in the first play in, in the sweet play. Yeah. Now you see it right here. Help your teammate out. Finish a block, right? If he didn't step out of bounds, it would have been a touchdown. That's team yep. football. So hopefully this is also something that they're going to bring is the extra effort uh, that they need at all positions in order to be a pretty good offense. Absolutely. And in our last play here, this is this is a screen, uh, kind of a misdirection play accident, play accident screen that I really, really um, thought was well executed and well thought up and um, obviously uh, get the ball in juice. Uh, uh, Antoine Juice Wells' hands here. Um, number three is a, a pretty good transfer, all FCS All American from James Madison. And there's kind of a, a good good reason why you want to get the ball in his hands here. Right. You see it right here again. Another uh, different formation, 11 personnel, right? Just see what type of defense you're in as far mm -hmm. as the, the motion goes. They're in zone, so you didn't see anybody run with them. They can run it against man or against zone. Preferably, they probably want to run it against man. But you see the big lineman getting out there, getting yeah. it to one of your best players. One block, get you look. He, he goes one step inside after he catches it, and then he gets straight up field again. Number six, good block, bad field by fourteen. Now he's in a trail position. Got the linebacker trying to chase down a world class athlete. Not going to happen, or not going to work out well for that linebacker. But you see this right here, catch it, smoke screen. That what we used to call it. I know it's uh, prehistoric. What I used to call plays, but a smoke screen. And now you see him once he gets up the sideline. And I'll tell you this again, a little nugget here for you fans. Most of explosive plays, once they get to the sideline, end, end, end up in touchdown. You see it? He gets to that sideline because it's the farthest way to, for an inside defender and an alley defender to run. Catches the sideline, touchdown. Again, second and 10. They're thinking as an offensive corner, can we get six or seven yard, yards out of this? He had two guys there, 90 misses, just a little bit of a chip block. 14, a bad fill. Five can't get there. One's coming from the other side of the field. You see number one right here. He's coming from all the way to the other side of the field. So when I talk about when the plays get to the sideline, their, their explosive plays are touchdowns. A little bit of a, a ghost kind of motion. Never was into the play concept. Look at the running back. Not even into it, right? And you see a big block by 71 right there. Just a little bit of a nudge where 90 was there. 14 made a business decision. I, I don't yeah. know what type of business he was in. It looked like he wasn't trying to play football in a seven to seven game in the in the beginning of the of, of the second half. But number three, right there, explosive play. When you look at South Carolina's offense the last two or three weeks, somehow, some way they were able to find a rhythm to get all their really good athletes and skill position guys the ball. It made Spencer Rattler actually look like the quarterback that he was uh, made out to be coming out of high school. It's efficient passing game, effective passion, passing game, explosive passing game. But then you know what else, what else it did? It allowed them to be more physical in the run game. And it starts up front. When you look at South Carolina's offense right now, how many linemen do you see downfield? Look at this. Look how these guys can move. So now you're not only talking about Steve or Marcus Satterfield, right? You're talking about the offensive line and the expectations for them to move. These guys are coming out. It, it, obviously, it's a little bit of a fake run look, but look at big 73, 54, 71, had a really good block, kind of threw him down there, ragdolled him there. He had to go out there and do a, a really good job of getting to number 90. That's the game-breaking block right there, just getting a hand on him. He falls over his feet, got hit by the turf monster, right? A bad a, look at Look at the lineman here getting number six. 
They're all downfield getting guys on the ground. So this is letting you know, even past what we're talking about, offensive concept, we're looking at the it, looking at the offensive line. Athletic offensive linemen that can do more than just stand there and be like big old, you know, mammoths, get out on in space and move. Because that's what you need for explosive plays. If you look at explosive offenses through the history of college football and NFL football or even high school football, if you want, linemen downfield is huge. And it's because they can get in the way and get a little bit of a block that's going to allow these world-class athletes and skill position guys to make explosive plays. So this is a really good look into uh, the offense that South Carolina ran, multiple personnel, multiple formation, multiple play concepts, effectively, mm -hmm. efficiently, and the best part, I think, Nebraska fans, the safe and the secure plays under pressure and situational football. So all the things that you probably read on the message boards and after the game, situational football, clock management, you can do it by throwing it, but you have to do it the right way, which is getting it to the your, your playmaker's hands and being effective and efficiently at the right time of the game. Uh, so this has been a pretty good, uh, you know, black shirt breakdown, even though we focus on offense. Uh, it's gotten me pretty excited because, uh, you know, well, it, it's bringing back some bad memories of being having, having to run around and chase all these guys all the time. But uh, I think conceptually, if a little bit of this comes or a lot of bit of it comes with, with Satterfield, and I don't know, obviously we don't know the staff and the responsibilities, yep. but you're looking at it, right? Using multiple players in multiple roles. You talk about the the transfer from Tennessee, right? With, with Satterfield, 6'3", mm -hmm. 260. Yep. Multiple position and flexibility. What that also tells you is holistically with Matt Rule and his coaching staff, we're going to try to get the most out of our roster, not just because you're not a starter, you're sitting over there watching football. If you can do something, we're going to get it out of you and it's going to help the team win. And that's what you need in order to be a consistent football team, but then also get Nebraska back to their winning ways. Yeah, well, I had fun breaking this down, Jay. I, I think you had some really good stuff there and you're right, just the versatility, the the diversity of of everything that South Carolina showed um, and that win over Kentucky was was pretty fun to watch, and I'm excited to do do more of these with you. We'll we'll um, kind of connect and see what other games to do um, of Marcus Satterfield, and um, kind of move on from there. But yeah, we will. Um, that that will be it for this week's black shirt breakdown. Make sure to um, head over to Nebraska.rivals.com. We have kind of a written version, kind of a written game game story right. of this of this um, uh, South Carolina win on the website for everyone to read as well. So. Um, with that, we will we'll be back next time. That is Jay Foreman. I'm Steve Marek, and we will see you guys later.